I'm very impressed actually. So generally speaking, the hearing aids kept me engaged in conversation. Today, they coped really well. Now there were certain limitations on that and I'll, I'll go into that in more detail in a second. Hello, my name's Matt. I've been wearing hearing aids since I was 17 years old. I'm now 25. Currently I wear the Oticon More Ones. So these are a device that sit behind the ear with a receiver going into the canal. I love them. I think they're brilliant. I've had a history of both NHS and private hearing aids, but have found these to really improve my quality of life. But today I'm very excited to be trying Bose's new hearing aids. Now I'm trained as an orchestral percussionist. So with music being a very keen interest in my life, I'm interested to see how these sound with records on or in musical environments and uh, this weekend is a good weekend to be trying them so i've got a few errands to run today whether that's going to the shop um to get some stuff but also i've got a family birthday party coming up this weekend so a little gathering and then a little gathering with some friends as well on saturday evening so it'll be really interesting to get these set up see how they work this week and i'll be excited to feed all that information back to you. So I thought I'd just show you what it all looks like on the inside. I haven't looked inside this yet, so it's very exciting. So this is the little case that they've come in. Oh. Okay, so a little manual. Yeah, so instructing me to download the app. Okay, so they're battery powered, these ones and a user guide. Okay, oh, now this is the main event. Let's have a look. A very nice fancy case. There we go. Okay. Initial reactions. There's nothing spectacular about this as a hearing aid. It's not pushing the boundaries at all in terms of it it looks like a very conventional hearing aid as i mentioned it's battery powered and there's a dome been put on the end already let's have a look at what else has been provided in the box okay so we've got some batteries in there some domes as well size one size two and size three that looks like a little cleaning tool in there. And then this little thing, which I'm assuming I will learn how to use later. Excellent. Well, there we go. Bose hearing aids. So I've just finished setting up the Bose sound control hearing aids uh, and I'm hearing my voice for the first time it is I've set it up how I thought it might work best for me I am impressed by the sound so far although it is a bit boomy but I guess the the joy of this and what is empowering about these hearing aids is that I'm experiencing a little bit too much tinniness, so I can just go to the app and turn down the treble. The app has what it calls the world volume, and then it's got another dial for treble and bass, and you can adjust them like that. Now, my initial reactions are that they look pretty good. It's a little bit less discreet than, than other brands, particularly with the, the receiver length. I'm not sure if they do receivers other than size two. But as you've just experienced there, there is quite a bit of feedback coming in, which makes me feel like I need to turn down the world volume, but then I also like the volume it's at. So there's, there's that balance that I'm experiencing straight away as well. What does occur to me straight away is that if I wasn't a previous hearing aid user, I'd have no idea if I was setting these up right. An initial reaction is 
particularly if you've never used hearing aids before, make sure you read this thing first. Because the app, once you're all connected and the connection process was pretty quick, it was pretty good. The phone picked up the hearing aids via Bluetooth straight away and it just connected and the hearing aids started working and started giving me some sound. But I could have just left it there and not really had a clue. So there's not a setup process that the app takes you through. It's just, here you go, off you go. So if you've never used hearing aids before, you need that. After some digging on the app, there is uh, there are some tutorial videos to show you kind of how to wear them, how to change the dome, how to use the app. So that's really helpful as well. But whilst it feels empowering, it feels empowering that I've got the ability to set up hearing aids for myself. I am aware that I have no idea if I've done it correctly for me with my hearing. And it's kind of all based on subjective information which is empowering but just feels a little bit blasé at the moment but I'm going to continue to use these throughout the rest of the weekend and I'll keep you filled in on everything that comes back. One thing that's really important to me is music listening. So I trained as an orchestral percussionist and so it's a really big important part of my life both listening to and performing music. Now I've got these bows sound control hearing aids set up on my phone. I've connected them via Bluetooth. There doesn't appear to be any form of direct audio streaming, which I'll mention more later on, but I wanted to give an idea and just an initial reaction. I'm going to pop a record on and let's see how the hearing aids cope. Generally speaking, the sound quality is pretty good, actually. I thought a classical record would be better, seeing as that's what I do most of the time. It's good. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable to listen to. The sound isn't quite as pure as my other hearing aids and that I've tried the Oticon more ones that I'm used to using. Um, yeah, that was pretty good. It felt crisp. I was getting the details that I was expecting to hear. I have got the, the record player turned up quite loud, not overly loud, but to a good volume. But I, I found that enjoyable. There wasn't any feedback. There wasn't distortion coming out, which was enjoyable. I'm very impressed, actually. I mentioned earlier, there's, there doesn't seem to be any way of directly streaming audio from your phone, even when the hearing aids are connecting, from what I've discovered so far. It kind of feels like that's where Bose would excel the most, with the speaker technology that they've got out there at the moment and the high quality of, of their products in other forms of the market. I feel like that's something that I would have expected these hearing aids to have. But that's okay, based on what I've just heard there in a live music listening scenario, quality was pretty good. So I'm in a shopping centre at the moment with the new Bose hearing aids. I wanted to try them out in a little retail context, so I've just been out and bought something in a shop. The one-on-one -on -one conversation side of things was relatively good. I did need to ask the guy to repeat himself a couple of times, but my biggest observation that I wasn't expecting is that actually it's the unexpectedly loud background sounds in the center that I'm struggling to kind of differentiate between when there's either a big screeching or you know children playing in the background it's not really reducing any of that in order to allow me to focus on the person in front of me so I think that was probably the reason for me needing to ask him to repeat himself but I only had to do that once in the whole conversation so that's pretty good that's pretty good but I'll be interested to see how well the hearing aids cope in an environment with more background noise as well. So I've been using the Bose sound control hearing aids and I wanted to report back on a couple of social things that I went to yesterday. 
So the first was family lunch, eight of us gathered around the table, which was really lovely. So kind of a mixture of one-on-one -on -one conversations happening at one end of the table, big group discussions happening, a couple of moments where multiple conversations are happening. And the second event was meeting with some friends in the evening for some board games. And so that was quite sociable, people getting up and down, having multiple conversations, things moving about, people moving about. And I wanted to give you some of my feedback, some of my initial thoughts on how the hearing aids got on. So generally speaking, the hearing aids kept me engaged in conversation, did very well the majority of the time, is how I'd like to put it, and allowed me to have a really good level of communication with people. Now, there were certain limitations on that, and I'll, I'll go into that in more detail in a second. The hearing aids coped well, particularly with one-to-one -one conversation. So if I was sat here at the family dinner and I was having a conversation with the person sat kind of next to me on the end of the table, they did very well there. It didn't take much effort, didn't take much concentration, and I was able to stay kind of thoroughly engaged with that, which was great. The complications arose as the conversation, even if it was just one conversation, but involved everyone around the table. So I, on occasion, had to ask someone on the opposite side, on the opposite corner, to kind of say, oh, you know, what was that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. So brilliant one-to-one. -one. A little bit more of a struggle as you increase the distance of the speaker or the person that I was listening to. When there were multiple conversations happening around the table, what I did was kind of switch the microphones on the app to forward-facing rather than omnidirectional and that that also reduced the listening effort for me to just have a conversation either there with the person next to me or there straight in front across the table so there are certainly ways of me helping myself if I am struggling in that in the immediacy of that environment but one reflection is that you kind of need the app immediately accessible at all points which, I, you know, I didn't want to look rude having my phone out at the table. So I did explain, you know, I'm trying some new hearing aids and they go through the app. And obviously that spurs a really cool conversation. But that's not possible if you're at a board meeting or if you're at a very formal event with maybe maybe with people who don't know you so well. So that's something that I think would be interesting going forward. In terms of the board game evening, now there was a lot more movement there. Generally speaking, same things apply because there were lots of conversations happening and just trying to find that balance. I did spend quite a lot more effort, mental effort, listening into the conversations that were happening. I'm sure I missed things sometimes, but again, generally speaking, where I was focused, board game in the center, allowed me to be involved with my friends, just having a laugh and having a good time. So I'm being constantly reminded of how important it is to wear hearing aids, no matter what they are, given my level of hearing loss. And certainly the Bose hearing aids have given me benefit in those situations. There's absolutely no doubt about that. My main criticism at this point in time, having worn the hearing aids for about 48 hours now, or 72, yeah, yeah, 72 hours, is that the settings I find for one scenario, which are right, and, you know, I get on very well, not right when something sudden happens. And it feels like there isn't really much noise suppression happening at all when those loud, sudden sounds kind of cut across the atmosphere. Now, that might have been someone moving a chair or it was someone dropping some cutlery on the plate and it kind of clattering around. And it, it really was a moment of, whoa. And of course, you've got the you've got the volume control on the back, which is which is a great help or the app. But again, I don't remember having those kind of reactions with with my other hearing aids so I don't really know the technicalities of what's happening within the hearing aids but to me it feels like there isn't that much going on in the background to kind of limit any sudden changes of noise sudden changes in volume which can be quite overwhelming yeah so I would always find the level that was right for speech but then something sudden would happen and and I've got to try and find that balance because when I then turned the volume down in response to that loud sound, it meant that I sacrificed some of the volume and clarity of speech that I was getting on really well with. So again, you need the app. 
you need the facility and the dexterity to be able to press the buttons if you can't have the app out in front of you. So there is a balance. They're certainly providing benefit for me in such social situations, but loud sounds have been pretty woof, hard to take. Hello, so I've just got back from church. So for what better place for me to try the Bose hearing aids in? Some of my reflections are similar to ones I've mentioned in a previous clip. So generally speaking, I managed to hear the speaker really well, managed to hear the priest really well or, or the prayers. Now, part of that is because there is a really good sound system in place at the church that I go to. And that obviously helps me. It's been part of the reason why I enjoy going there so much is it does have that facility for me and other hard of hearing individuals in the church. There isn't a capacity for the hearing aids to be tuned into a loop system. Now that's not something that I particularly use anyway, but I know that might be a really hindering factor for some people who, who do routinely use that as a setting in their hearing aids. So from what I've discovered, I don't think there is the option for that. So yeah, I heard the speaker really well and I found a level that was comfortable for me with one individual speaking through the microphone and it being projected out into the church, brilliant. Similar concern as before though, what was right for listening to one scenario, one, what I'd call like an auditory scenario. So one person speaking through a speaker system those settings that I put on the app were not right as soon as, let's say, the choir started singing or the organ had a particularly loud section, you know, so whether or not that was a piece of organ music at the end, organ voluntary or something similar. I was then getting my phone out and I wouldn't normally get my phone out in church, but, but you know, they're chill with it. So yeah, but then I'm getting my phone out connecting the hearing aids through to the app, which by the way, if your battery is running low on the hearing aids, and it's quite funny because the same, it's the same voice that tells you you've got a low battery as the person who tells you that your Bose speaker needs charging. It's that same voice. So I found that very funny when I first heard it. But if your hearing aid is running low on battery, it will not connect to the app. It's a slight problem if you're needing to make adjustments and you're running low on battery. But thankfully I had a spare set of batteries on hand it's just another thing to remember after church went down for coffee now it's quite a reverberant space so i knew that that would be quite complex for the hearing aids to deal with and and it was the echo and the multiple conversations happening in lots of different places meant that there was quite a lot of effort involved in me making sure that i was engaged with the people that i was having a conversation with and it did mean at one point that I just I just decided to focus on having a conversation with one person, which isn't something I would normally have had to make a decision with. Or a decision for. So it, it was simply a case of it was quite loud there. I chose, as I did at the board game evening at the family dinner, to go forward facing and concentrate on one conversation that was happening. So there is a limitation there. I did that because I felt I could, you know, I, I think the conversation allowed for it. So I don't think it was a particular negative in the end, but again, needed the app out. You've got to be very familiar with it and it's got to be accessible at, at various points. So I've just got home from work. This is my first day using the Bose sound control hearing aids on a working day. So I work in a busy environment, phones are going all the time, patients coming in and out, one-on-one -on -one conversations, trying to deal with customer service. It's very much a customer service based environment. And today they coped really well. I'm not gonna lie. I was very impressed just with the busyness of my day going, going in and out, dealing with phone calls, etc. I really, really forgot about them, which is a great sign. It meant that I was tuning into all of the conversations I needed to tune into. It meant that I was hearing everything that I wanted to be hearing. Now, my reflection on that is that because I've had the weekend to try the settings, adjust volume, adjust treble, I think I've found a level that works for me in that work context. So I said for me personally, I had it at 35, 35 on world volume and, and 15 on treble, just to give me that clarity of speech on top. And they did really well. So I didn't feel the need to change them during the working day, which is great. Obviously that is an environment where I'm familiar with it. 
I'm kind of in control as well. So I can always go to the patient if they're struggling to hear me. The other thing as well, of course, as you can see, is I cycle all the time. And that's quite a thing that, uh, you know, I've done that for, for years, but I quite often struggle with, with wind noise to the point where sometimes I'll choose to mute the hearing aids if it's a particularly windy day. The mute function is possible on the app, so I thought I'd mention that. That is a helpful tool if it is particularly windy, but the hearing aids do have a volume button on the back, which to be honest was very helpful. It meant that I could just tune down the particular windy day that, that I was cycling through and still kind of have that environment of car and noise around me. So yeah, very manageable from a cycling perspective as well for any keen cyclists. So I'm just heading back from a walk with some friends. Been using the Bose hearing aids for just under a week now and um, just wanted to report back. So it was pretty quiet where we were walking. I know I've got the sound of traffic now, but um, yeah, got on really well. Got on really well with them and all the kind of information that I would have expected to receive, I did. Uh, I had them in omnidirectional mode the whole time, which definitely made the most sense given we're all obviously walking in a straight line. All good com good clarity, good level of conversation. Couldn't really talk about background reduction because there wasn't really that much of it. I know that hearing aids put a lot of tech into that side of things. Was able to engage outdoors with a group of friends. So having worn Bose's hearing aids for a while now, I wanted to just feed back to you guys with some concluding thoughts and I've got four of them for you. There is no doubt that Bose's sound control hearing aids gave me benefit in everyday scenarios. I was constantly reminded of how important it is for someone with a hearing loss to wear hearing aids in their ear. It gives you access to your environment. It allows you to be involved in conversation. And I was constantly reminded of that. They certainly gave me benefit in everyday scenarios. The second thing is that the app does need to be accessible pretty much all the time, simply because one setting that you've found that's right for one environment may not be right for the next environment. And obviously our world is very quickly shifting and moving. And so you need to have that app or be able to use the buttons pretty easily, pretty much all the time when you're wearing them. So if your auditory environment doesn't change very much, that's great. That's what I've described when I was using them at my workplace. You know, I, I knew that environment, I could leave it at one setting. But as soon as I left, as soon as I started to do something else, went to a social kind of environment, I was then needing to change for the things around me. So that's consideration number two. Now, whilst the self setup of these hearing aids, it's, it's very satisfying. You, know, you download the app, you get the hearing aids out the box and you can just go. One thing is that I, I didn't have any actual objective kind of verification that I was doing it right for me. So I simply set up the world volume, set up the treble, how I thought it worked. And on reflection, I had no real idea as to whether or not I was over amplifying, under amplifying, or actually meeting my needs. Now, since moving back to the hearing aids that I've got from an audiologist, my Oticon More Ones, I can really tell that a professional has had their involvement on the hearing aid settings. It, it feels more uh, professional. That's, that's the word for it. It feels more professional. It feels more tailored, more fine tuned and more appropriate for me as an individual. Now that's not taking away from the Bose because their, their selling point, their brilliant aspect is that you can self fit them, but it does feel a little bit more blase than going through seeing a professional hearing specialist and audiologist. And my final thought, thought number four is that these hearing aids, over the counter hearing aids, Bose's sound control hearing aids are a brilliant stepping stone for patients accessing hearing aids. I think that's super important. People need to be able to access these if they need them. The flip side of that, of course, is my concern about potential misdiagnosis. If I were to have a sudden hearing loss and I go and buy myself some and I get some amplification, I have no idea if there is something potentially hazardous happening in the background. So my final thought, if you are at all concerned about your hearing, I would still suggest that you go and see an audiologist, go and see a hearing care professional 
and then if they recommend hearing aids for you and you need the price point to be a little bit lower and you want to go for something over the counter, these would be a great way to go. Thank you so much.